Yeah, so I'm postdoc at Imperial College, uh, supervised by David, my line manager. So I'm going to talk checkpoint schedules uh, package for adjoint problems and why. Uh, so checkpoint schedule, schedule is not inside of FireDrake software, is a, um, a package, Python package in the FireDrake project. But why we have the checkpoint schedules? Because uh, FireDrake provides automated uh, gradients based on a joint method. And um, um, to have this kind of, to, to, to run a kind of um, problem involving gradients, we need to store every uh, operation using FireDrake. So, just to introduce, to introduce um, we have an adjoint problem, and just to, to, to make simple this presentation, we have one gradient based in adjoint methods. And I have here one uh, adjoint variable and a forward solution. So, forward solution is solved, so it's forward time advancing. And we have here an adjoint variable that's backward time advancing, which means I need to restore every uh, operation when I uh, run my forward solver. And then when I finish my forward solver in end time, I need to back um, my simulation and run the backward uh, time. I, I need to run the adjoint problem. But here, as you see, you have the gradient. In, uh, integrating the time and we have a dependence of the forward solver. Which means I need to save the forward, uh, the forward data and the forward info information. Um, this kind of um, computation, if anyone here works with time-dependent problem involving uh, adjoint based gradients, we need to store, uh, we need to store every operation for Drake, and that means high memorization when we have a long time of simulation. So, um, and how we can try, if you don't have one memory, or memory available to work with our problem, we can use checkpoint approach methodology. That is, so we have checkpoint algorithms that store some steps and uh, this kind of algorithm, for instance. So we run our forward solver, we don't save every time step uh, forward information, and we can back and get this information and recompute the forward solver, and then back it and compute the, our adjoint problem, and then to have your adjoint uh, based gradient. Okay, um, checkpoint schedules. Schedules is a package that provides these algorithms. Uh, for uh, is a Python package and provide uh, schedules for step-based incremental checkpointing of adjoint computer models. The schedules contains instructions. So the basic instructions is advance the forward solver, advance the forward uh, the adjoint model, store the data, and retrieve the data. Why checkpoint schedules? So we have, uh, for 20 uh, years, we have already uh, algorithms, um, checkpoint algorithms presented in literature, and we have a diverse number of algorithms that's accessible for anyone. But why this package? It's basically because you can, um, um, so checkpoint shadows was thought to, uh, to, to provide a number of checkpoint algorithms is accessible to a common interface. So I can use, I can have with checkpoint schedules and diverse algorithms of um, checkpointing. And also we are providing a package for anyone that wants to add a new algorithm of checkpointing. Another thing, um, for instance, I, I want to solve an um, adjoint based gradient, but um, I'm doing some tests and I want to I want to compute the forward solver and I have my my solver and um, okay I need to adapt to my code my solver to use a checkpoint uh, a checkpoint package 
but at the same time, sometimes I don't need to compute adjoint basic gradient. With this package, we also provide some schedules for a simple case, for instance, only the forward computation. So you can have a solver, a joint basic gradient solver, but sometimes you want only to compute the forward uh, problem, and we can, so checkpoint schedules provide this kind of schedule. Another example, um, I'm running a small test here in my computer, and so I don't need to use checkpoints because uh, it's more expensive and I'm doing only one test. I can run with checkpoint schedules as well. So I can run without use any checkpointing algorithm and run my forward and my, my adjoint solver. Here, for instance, we have the actions and we have our run time in illustration. So run the forward and forward and back with an adjoint that's reverse and reverse in time and finalize our, our simulation. Okay, I want to simulate one case, uh, to run one case where I, uh, for me, uh, doesn't make sense to use a checkpoint because it's expensive to recompute the forward solver. And I want only to save in disk. Uh, we, on disk, we have this kind of schedule as well. So the user can, uh, can run a forward and then store every information of the forward problem in the, on the disk and then back and run the, 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 the adjoint solver. And now we start with Revolve uh, and uh, that is a, a checkpoint algorithm. In this case, I'm using only the storage type in memory. So we have, we provide this type of solver, of a revolver algorithm. We provide also one kind of algorithm that meets the storage, which means can store and run, and run can store in, in, on disk. So that's the one kind, of, um, one kind of schedules that we provide. It's just an example. So basically, checkpoint shadows provide uh, schedules for uh, trivial, simulations, also using uh, storage on disk, also using um, checkpoint algorithms with uh, mixed storage, run, and disk. Um, and checkpoint schedules can be integrated with solvers that is not using um, algorithm differentiation. So if you implement your adjoint, checkpoint schedules can be integrated but can be integrated with algorithm differentiation. That's our goal here. Uh, for instance, it's working with TLM adjoint. It's a, a, a software that provides automated adjoint as well. And it work is going ongoing to integrate with PyAdjoint. So basically, it's just to, to implement some base functions to run your solver. So we have here a single dispatch um, base function. And then we have the, the general function, and then we have the um, specific functions. And for instance, inside of action forward, you can implement your solver or just, just call your forward solver. You can install checkpoint schedules. So it's available here, we can install checkpoint schedules. You can have the documentation, you can have an example and a tutorial explaining. So here is an acknowledgement. Some of the reference because, so we, we have um, diverse checkpoint methods and here for instance we have the revolve from this uh, paper and we have a multi-stage approach using a mixed storage type, run and disk. Another kind of uh, storage type, so that's the, the paper related to the checkpoint method that we have uh, inside of checkpoint schedules package. Yeah, so we can install checkpoint schedules to implement your algorithm, checkpoint in your algorithm. Uh, you can access the, the, the tutorial here. So yeah, thank you. That's it. <laughs> Uh, 
it would be possible to, whilst you are solving some steps backward with the adjuvant, to then start in parallel solving some forward yep. from the checkpoint and then to overlap those two things. So is that yes, worth yeah. doing? Is it useful? <laughs> is it possible? You mean to run parallel? Uh, well, to, no, to, 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 to at the same time have part of your computer doing the adjoint backwards and another part doing some forward model yep. to give you yes, just yes. in time the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the data to do the next the next part of the adjoint. Yeah, we can, yes. Mm -hmm. But that will, well, we can't. We, we, so all the bits are there, mm -hmm. and that will be a, like, that is a really cool thing that we should try doing sometime, I think. So, uh, no, like, I don't think anyone's written a schedule for this. I mean, well, you, uh, you, you do have a way to express it. <laughs> so, well, I think you could do it as a transform on schedule, right? Because what you're going to do is, um, so effectively, what you, you you've got your schedule, and you can write the schedule as a graph, mm -hmm. and now you want to do task parallelism on the graph, mm -hmm. and you, which would be a transform on the schedule, right? Okay. Um, and you could do that, and then you could just use ensemble parallelism and fire mm -hmm. to run the bits in the right places. Might make it a little bit faster. <laughs> I, I you know it, it's really like that'd be so if you assume like most users are that your problem isn't spatially that big. That's a great one that you've seen. Like, it would be a little bit faster. That would be enormously faster. I just want to say that like, Deep Speed already does that. Deep Speed? Deep Speed is like for. It's like a checkpoint that it's most often used for large functions, and it does exactly uh -huh. that. Like, when we wrote a checkpoint on JL data like half a year ago, and we also have to compare against that, and that's like, that already yeah. does that very efficiently. And it's also automatically able to utilize your entire file hierarchy. From, I think even now it even goes down to tape, worst case scenario, but like. So HRevolve does it too. HRevolve is yes. uh, uh, provably uh, uh, optimal in some sense for that. So the um, so we so um, the um, interface we wrapped at the top level. We only put RAM in this because it's the only reasonable use cases actually, but. Uh, the underlying algorithm actually has an arbitrary number of layers. Uh, it's just like. Do you want to implement that? That's always the question. Well, I, it's really difficult to think of application, real application cases where anyone would actually care. Um, and. Fast works. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Just a yeah. random idea. Uh, instead of. Instead of something in forward, uh, would it, is it conceivable to use like low end approximations of the solution in chunks of time intervals? Like you solve for ten time steps and then you consider like sort of like a matrix, so or, with a, with a, or like a tensor. We set the solution at each time step and then you do a low end approximation of these. We don't have it's a sequence of operations. Yes. Your application defines what forward means. So you're, you're, so you're asking a different question, right? So as far as checkpoint schedules is concerned, we can give you the correct sequence of uh, forward and adjoint yeah, yeah. solves. What do you think a forward solve is? Because I was never people. wondering whether, whether this is something useful. I haven't done this. Not yeah. So this is something that uh, anyone ever mentioned this? Yeah. 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 The, the schedule just say for you, save this step and retrieve this uh, step data of the forward to recompute the forward or maybe to use in the adjoint computation. And uh, between these steps, you decide what so, you so use. Using, using pod for optimizing, speeding up uh, adjoint problems is a, is a big, big Yeah, yeah, this is it. Well, well, any other sort of approximation to the forward state, like someone will have done it, sure you can do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, PyJoint will do it for you because the whole point of PyJoint is that it's automatic and so we can't, yeah, make, yeah. We can't make those decisions for you. Uh, can you modify the schedule on the plot? Yeah, so uh, uh, we don't have, uh, I guess we have online, you mean online schedule. Um, so, if you're, if you're iterating and you're doing a mesh adaptation, say, and you want to do the adjoint, 
you don't want to give it back to your original mesh. You want to do it just back at three steps. On one iteration and two steps on another iteration. Oh, I see. Uh, the state one time the state space. Space. The, it, uh, you mean? You're doing the forward every time, but you might not want to do the adjunct all the way back. You mean um, to decide this schedule while we compute the forwards according to some external. Can you adjust the schedule in iterative? You can, I mean, you can rewrite, so you can rewrite the schedule as you go along. Uh, I think you're. The thing is doing, so. It's written in Python, so I guess you're just going through. <laughs> So I mean, you know what I mean there. So you can, so the, I mean, the schedule just gives you the full sequence of uh, steps, and you can, because you know where you are in the schedule, you can rerun backwards part of the schedule, right? And and that would that would work. And you would know where you are in the consistent results at that point. Um, the question here is because if you're adapting, are you adapting backwards as well? And people do. Because if you adapt backwards, then you're out of our turf because you now don't have. You've blown the tape, right? You've got to do something weird. Um, but the backward is better than the forward. So it is when we usually do it. Um, but you can, so what, if you adapt on the way back, what you're effectively doing is a um, um, an optimized and discretized approach, which means that you don't have a tape in the same sense. So oh, we can interpolate between meshes, as previously discussed. So that's so different. That's not, that's not the same thing, right? So if you, if you that wouldn't be adapting on the way back, or not adapting on the way back differently from on the way forward, which is the thing that we. Uh, well, I just need to be able to interpolate. I, so the thing is, the joint problem is parameterized by the forward problem. Yeah. So I need to be able to join. I need to be able to interpolate. Values from the forward. No, it's, it's, it's worse than that because things like the time slip is going to change. So what time slip is going to change? If you change your mesh, you probably change the time slip. Right? Well, I might do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, now all the boxing will probably go. And now the this gets this is hairy. Um, but people do that, so yeah, it, it, it should be possible to. Um, with checkpoint schedules, it's possible to. Um, it's possible to define our final time step while is running uh, the forward model. So, for instance, you arrive at some step, and you, or I said that you don't have um, one result that you expected. So, with checkpoint schedule, it's possible to define the final step after to start the the run um, after before after uh, to start or. Uh, your execution. It's a very, it, so it can roast this kind of checkpointing algorithm. That's interesting for if you want to run to a steady state and you don't know when, exactly when you're going to reach that steady yes, state. Yes, yeah. So it's running, for instance, for, for the case where uh, we have every forward data storage. Um, I'm not sure if, every, if you have a checkpointing algorithmic with forward recomputation with this kind of feature, but checkpoint schedules accept this kind of algorithm. So and can run uh, your also your uh, adjoint equation in times when you want. What we're basically digging out of is the need to rewrite to re implement the, uh, the schedules every time, which is a problem right now, not least because the people who write the schedules have a tendency to Produce code that, to be polite, is not production ready. Uh, I could be a lot more rude about it. Um, in fact, the age of old people, the code wasn't just production ready; it was wrong. Um, <laughs> there, so Dynamics had, had to fix numerous uh, actual errors in the published uh, mm -hmm. reference implementation of age of old while porting into <laughs> into here. So we're we're trying to dig ourselves out of that. Well, part of the problem is that people with this skill set tend to get sucked into machine learning companies and then yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, the main I thing is yeah. that. So uh, they don't care that much. Like the Python should really don't care about checkpoint schedule. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't. They run, well, the thing is that even a deep neural network is much, much, much shorter than a VD solve. Right? Yeah. So, like, you know, there are probably people in this room who. Want to join problems with tens of thousands of steps, 
nobody's neural net is 10,000 to play the game for our neurons. Again, that's again a good thing. That's like us, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, last thing, I guess. So checkpoints also, uh, so checkpoint schedules is taught to attend their joint problems. So, and have schedules as well to solve nonlinear uh, forward equations and also linear forward, uh, forward solve equations. So, we taught to attend the people that are using uh, a joint methods in your optimization problem, your sensitive computation. Uh, well, if you're for problems really, you don't need this, but like nobody's for problems really. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to close the session, and I remember one question I wanted to ask, which is: um, Does can this be used to help with reusing solvers? So if you no, a it's, it's, completely, like that, it's a completely you, different problem. You, you so can't that you can't. So you take information on it. It's it's not. I struggle to see why that's a chip. Maybe just do it on the table. Yeah. Right. Um, so it would only be a checkpoint problem if you thought that you needed to like separately store the state of the solvers each time, which theoretically maybe we do, but we don't. So yeah, I can't. Yeah. Okay. Thanks to all our speakers.